All right, we have a very special guest for you guys today, one of the newest Denver Nuggets, and that guy is Zeke Naji. Zeke, thank you so much for taking some time to allow us to get to know you a little bit better and allow these season ticket members to get an inside look as to who you are as both a player and a person. Of course, thanks for having me. <laughs> Let's just start by catching everybody up maybe to this point of your Denver Nuggets career. What has it been like your first month or so in the NBA? Is it what you expected? Is it not what you expected? Maybe give us uh, an inside look as to what that's been like. Yeah, um, I mean, so far so good. I mean, I think that I got a lot of advice coming into the pre-draft process and uh, going through the combine and everything like that. So I got a lot of advice from different guys that I was working out with and, um, yeah, all I can say is that this process has been great. It's been even better than I, than I expected. Everyone's been super welcoming and supportive of me. I uh, feel like I'm getting better overall, um, both on the court and off the court. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm really enjoying my time so far. Before we go any further, I have to ask, who are the guys that gave you advice? Who's, whose words have stuck out in terms of your development? Yeah, um, I would say the, the biggest that I've been here have been uh, Coach Bonnie. I mean, he works out with me literally every day. Um, and Jokic, I think, has been super big for me, too. I mean, just his IQ is off the charts. I mean, he, he's, su he's such an intelligent player, and um, he's telling me little things here and there that are definitely going to help my game uh, bring it to the next level. Is Jokic or who you expected him to be? Yeah, I would say so. Um, <laughs> I mean, there are times that he can be a clown and just be, be goofing off with everyone, and other times he can be serious and focused, and I think that he has the right balance of both, and I mean, it's fun to be around. So many guys, including Coach Malone, have talked about his example that he sets as a leader in terms of what he's saying. He's gotten a lot better about that, but also just the way that he carries himself uh, day in and day out. As a young guy in the NBA, what is that like to have, you know, to be his shadow, to have him to follow? No, it's, it's amazing. I mean, having like the best center in the league, being able to be in front of you, and be able to learn from him. I think that that's a, that's a treat not everyone gets. And I'm, I'm super grateful for that. I mean, I think one thing about him that's, that's really impressed me is that even though, you know, he's an all-star, he's a superstar, you know, he, he still literally comes to the gym every day, even on off days, he comes in, he's lifting weights, he's, uh, he's on the court working out, taking care of his body, and uh, he's setting a really good example for me to try and follow. Obviously, Zeke, you haven't gotten a ton of playing time, so you probably are doing a lot of behind-the-scenes workouts and player development with the coaches. What are those workouts like for season ticket members that don't see you on the floor? Like, what's your day-to-day? -day? Yeah, so... I mean, I, I literally work out every day. Um, so if I'm not playing as much, I'm doing a lot more stuff in the weight room um, on the court. Usually in the weight room, we'll do we'll alternate upper body and lower body, doing a lot of uh, explosive training, a lot of uh, lateral quickness stuff uh, to help my versatility on defense. Um, on the court, we're doing a lot of ball handling, a lot of shooting, shooting off the dribble, um, post work, um, moving without the ball. I think that those are kind of the things that we've been doing every day to, to help me so that when I'm, when I'm called up, that I'm ready. So many guys have talked about this Nuggets locker room, and I know there's a ton of new faces this season, but being like a college locker room, like a true brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Have you sensed that in your time so far? Oh, definitely, definitely. I think one of the things going into uh, going into the draft, you know, I got a lot of uh, people telling me that, uh, that NBA is more business. I mean, yes, it is, but, like, I haven't really got that feeling as much like being around these guys, you know, everyone really cares about each other. I don't feel like anyone's being selfish or looking just for themselves to, to do well. You know, everyone really genuinely cares about how well their teammates are doing and, and how, how they're feeling. And I think that that's, that's just made, um, you know, being on this team more fun. Is there anything about the culture that has stood out to you in terms of practice, games, the way that this Nuggets franchise carries itself? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is um, – Teamwork, you know, playing as a team and playing together. I mean, when you have a, a superstar like Jokic, who's literally one of the most, the, the most unselfish superstar in the NBA, being, being willing to pass the ball, being willing to give him, give himself up for other people. Um, I mean, you have no excuse if, if you're not, if you're not at his level to, to not do the same. So everyone, everyone really buys into that. And uh, playing as a team is something that's, that's really big here. What's the craziest thing you've seen Jokic do? Craziest thing, um, I think it was what it was maybe a shoot around or a practice, and someone just shot the ball, you know, and then Jokic comes out of nowhere, grab like 
the, the ball the ball goes off the rim, right, bounces, and he comes in out of nowhere, grabs the ball, does a 360 dunk. Everyone's freaking out, like, what? No one expected that. And we just we just stopped practice because that was that was we just we just were done. <laughs> I have heard that story from probably four different people. And for some reason, there's still not video out there. I know you guys record every practice. We need to even like this is for season ticket members. At the very least, we need to like release it to them. So that yeah, that, that was that was insane. That was out of nowhere. He just comes flying in, three sixty dunk. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> So cool. I Because you guys play similar positions, how has your basketball IQ grown through watching him and the way that he sees plays develop on the court? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's incredible. I mean, whether you're guarding it, whether uh, it's the person defending him or the defender in uh, help side defense, um, his ability to read what the defense is giving him is, is incredible. Like he can feel when he's posting up what someone is doing, like if they're providing, putting more pressure on this one side, He'll take advantage or to do a jab and make him go that way. Like it's just like incredible his feel for the for the game and off the court. I mean, I mean, off ball on like help side defense, his uh his ability to see the floor and keep his eyes up while someone's still guarding him is, is incredible because you have someone already on you defending the defending you your hardest and you're still able to to look around and see the whole court. I mean, it's just incredible. So I have some questions from season ticket members here and we're going to get into more stuff about you, but can you imagine a better place for your first couple years or your first year, or a better group to learn from considering? Uh, no, I mean, this is by far a lot better than I, than I was hoping my first year would go, you know, I mean, even though I'm not playing, I feel like I'm getting better every day and I'm, I'm around guys that are fun to be around. And uh, it's real, I mean, I'm really enjoying my experience so far. Okay, let's get into a couple of these questions because they want to hear their questions. Well, that's the first priority here. Okay. So Bill from section 110, and I'm so sad, Zeke, because Ball Arena is a pop in place. Like when <laughs> there are fans in there, it is loud. It's so fun. And I so wish that I could like say these names and you could be like, oh yeah, section one, I'll look for him next time or I'll look yeah. for her. Yeah. One day soon, I hope that that happens. But for oh. now, <laughs> Bill typically sits in section 110. What do you like to do for fun other than play basketball? And this is a great question for you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like my, my thing off the court, you know, when I'm not playing basketball is piano, uh, music, music in general, but the big thing for me is piano. Um, I literally, I have a, my own, my own piano that I have at home. I uh, play it literally every day, whether I'm just playing around, improvising or uh, playing different pieces. I mean, that's, that's literally what I do in my free time. So you finally got a piano. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When did that happen? Uh, I got it uh, maybe around December 20th. Um, that's when I moved into my my apartment and I was able to finally get one. And it felt good to be able to, to play again. <laughs> I know. So the first road trip that you guys went on, you somehow found a piano. It's like they're a magnet to you or something. You, you can always find a musical instrument somewhere, it seems like. <laughs> And you were playing in the lobby in front of a lot of your coaches and teammates. What was that moment like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was fun, you know. Um, you were going to, we were going, we actually we just got done watching like film or whatever on our on our opponent and. We we're going to the elevators and there was a piano there and everyone was like, Zeke, oh, we heard you play piano. We heard you play piano. Uh, go, go play something for us. I'm like, okay. And I had, I really hadn't played anything in a long time because I was still in the hotel and there was no access to the piano. So I had to think of something on the fly. So I just decided to, to play what came to my mind first. And that's, that's just what I played. So yeah, it was fun. You've also, or you did, I guess, you played the national anthem when you were at Arizona in front of a, a packed house. Mm -hmm. Take me through that experience. Yeah, that was that was that was crazy because uh, when I was on my visit, my official visit to Arizona, they were like, "Oh yeah, we can get you to," or maybe it was my mom. She said, "Oh, that would be nice if Zeke could play the national anthem for for a game." And they're like, the "Coach, was like, oh yeah, we can set that up." And and so like six months passed, and I was finally at Arizona. And it was about it was about that time, and um, yeah, my mom reminded my coaches, and like, and my coach was like, oh yeah, you still want to do that? I'm like, sure, why not? Because I I never done something like that before. But I was you know I was willing to try it out, a new experience. 
the night comes where I'm doing it and uh, I look out like I can see through the, like the curtains and I'm like, I got really nervous. Like I got like butterflies in my stomach. Like I've never, never before. It's like, it's different. Cause like when you're playing on a basketball court, you know, you're with other guys. And I don't know, I just felt like when I was on there by myself, it's like all eyes were on me. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and that was by far the biggest crowd I've ever played in front of. But uh, you know, I went out there, just let loose. I mean, as soon as I got out there, you know, I wasn't really thinking about everything. Just kind of let my my fingers do the work, and um, I happened to do it well. So that was that was definitely really fun. More nervous for your first NBA minutes or for that experience? Oh, that experience by far. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Tell people what other instruments you play. When you say your your hobby is music, what does that mean exactly? Um. So yeah. Uh, I think the other instruments I play are um, yeah, piano, alto, sax, uh, harmonica, and um, learning Spanish guitar right now. So, yeah. A man of many talents, you guys. <laughs> many talents. Um, before we move on from the music, Zeke, did you know that Jamal Murray told us that you sent him into retirement from the piano? Oh, serious? <laughs> <laughs> so, Why is that? I asked. I asked him about you playing and if he had seen you play because Jamal like dabbled in it a little bit and posted a couple pictures of him playing some theme songs and well-known like melodies on the piano on his social media. Yeah. And when the Nuggets drafted you, I was like, Jamal, do you, are you like going to mix it up with Zeke? Like, are you guys going to do a little duet? Are you, is you going to take some lessons? What's going on? And he was like, nah, man, as soon as I saw him play the piano, he sent me straight into retirement. <laughs> your thoughts on that <laughs> that's funny I don't know I mean I mean I don't know I think that he still he can still work at it you know get better I think that'd be cool we do a little duet or something I don't know <laughs> you should bring that up with him see if he'll do a duet with you oh definitely that would be that'd be solid solid social media content I love that so much okay let's get to another uh season ticket member question here Stacy from 106 and Rob from section 148 they had a similar question so we're just going to combine the two they're curious to know your thoughts and reaction to the speed of the NBA game as opposed to the college game and if there was an adjustment for you to make if any um yeah I definitely think that the speed of the game is uh is definitely faster I think that there was some adjustment but I feel like I've really uh, been able to adjust well. I think that the biggest difference that I noticed from college to NBA is like the spacing of the floor, especially on offense. Like there's so much, so much more space and room to operate than there was in college. College, you know, everyone would pack the lane. There would be tons of people no matter where you tried to go. But uh, the NBA, the spacing is really good. And, and um, I think it makes it easier to operate on offense. But in terms of the speed of the game, I feel like I've adjusted well. I didn't, I think that that was as big of a deal as I thought it was going to be. You talk about the spacing and I'm curious, you, you've also mentioned you worked a lot on your outside shot before you declared for the draft. And even now I'm sure you have been, is that, does that play a role in it? Knowing that you're going to be spaced out and you're going to have more opportunities away from the basket than you did in college. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, even as soon as college ended, um, or as, as the season was cut short, um, I, I was working a lot on, um, spending my range being able to, to knock down that three consistently. And um, I think that definitely helps with um, um, spacing as well for me because being able to operate from the three-point line, people and people making people respect you um, allows more, more lanes to drive and uh, protect the rim. So that's, that's definitely been a big part of my game. Awesome. Eric from section 140, who on the current team do you think will be key to elevating your skill set to become a great player in today's NBA? Yeah, um, in terms of like a player? Yeah, one of your teammates, which I guess we kind of already talked about Jokic, but yeah. you can use him again if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I would say I would say Jokic, you know, I mean, the best center in the league by far. I think that he's uh, the best passing big man of all time. I mean, his vision and his IQ are, are off the charts and to be able to, to learn from him and to be around him every day. I mean, I mean I'm just a sponge. I'm trying to soak up everything that I can and uh, learn, learn as much as I can so I can implement that into my game. 
he's obviously so gifted in so many ways, Zeke. So how do you balance like seeing what he does and being like, man, no one can ever do that like he does, but also taking little bits and pieces that you think you can make your own? Yeah, um, I don't know. I think that, I think it's just really watching him and then if I see something that I feel like, oh yeah, I can, I can learn that or I can, I can acquire that at, at some point. You know, I'll, I'll definitely be working on that or ask him questions to ask him a lot of questions. But um, yeah, I mean, there's some plays that you just, you just uh, sit back and like, wow, how, how did he do that? Or how did, how do you make that pass? I mean, and that's, that's just why he's Jokic. Yeah, I love that. Brittany from section 142, when you checked into the game for the first time, what did you say to yourself? Good question. Yeah, I think, um, you know, as soon as I heard my name, name call, you know, I got, I got really excited and I was, I feel like I was smiling a lot. Here comes Zeke and then like, when I stepped on the court, um, that, that, that was a, that was an incredible experience, you know, just my first time, you know, that's a dream I've had since I was a, since I was a little kid and uh, to be able to finally step on the court, it's like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm getting there. I mean, I'm obviously not where I want to be. I'm never going to be satisfied, but to, to have that and be able to be on the court for my first time, you know, that's definitely a step in the right direction. And that was a, a huge uh, milestone that I was able to, to pass. So yeah, I mean, that was, that was incredible. <laughs> I want to take it back even one step further. Before you experienced your first minutes, are you sitting on the bench and just like watching the game? Like, are you seeing the score and being like, it might be tonight. It might happen now. Like, what is that process like waiting and anxiously sitting there being like, when am I going to get my first minutes? Yeah, you know, yeah. Sometimes uh, you'll be you'll be uh, sitting on the bench and uh, think, okay, third quarter, we have a really good lead. Okay, I think that tonight's my night. And then we know we might lose the lead. I'm like, okay, maybe not tonight, but then we'll get it back. So it's kind of like, you just, you really just got to stay ready because anything can happen. So you got to be ready for anything. <laughs> You got in last night too against Oklahoma City. Were you ready for that one? Were you like, this is going to be a game where I can come in and I'll have some real minutes here? I think so. I think even going into the game, we felt like that we were going to do really well against them. So I felt like I just had to be ready when I was on the bench um, for, for when my number got called. So yeah. Andrew from section 104. What has the necessary discipline to become a gifted piano player taught you? about the dedication and focus required to succeed on the biggest stage in the NBA? Yeah, um, you know, I think for me, piano really taught me how to work hard from a young age. I think I, like, I mean, I started piano like when I was in first grade and um, like really practicing, spending two hour, two hours every day, like trying to master a piece. And I started that around first grade. And so that's, that's even before I started working really hard at basketball. Cause you know, at that age, you know, everyone's just, playing basketball to play basketball because, you know, they're little kids. Piano really taught me how to work hard because it taught me how to sit down, really set aside time and focus on um, mastering a craft, you know, same kind of work and dedication that you put into to piano can be applied to basketball. For example, when you want to get a right, when you want to get a piece down, uh, when you want to memorize like a, a difficult piece, you know, you got to practice the part over and over and repeat it to build that muscle memory to, uh, to play it the right way. And that's like the same thing with your with your jump shot or whatever, you know? Uh, you have to practice like hour, two hours every day, um, constantly repeating the same motion to, to build the correct muscle memory to help you shoot the ball better. So I think doing piano at a young age really taught me how to, to work hard, I think. Were you good at piano right from the beginning? Um, yeah, I, I would say so. I mean, even before I started um, taking lessons like when I was like four or five, um, I had a little toy piano and I would be playing little different melodies on there as a little kid. And so my parents noticed that and then they, they enrolled me in piano lessons and I just kind of took off from there. Are you more or were you more naturally blessed with an ability to play piano or basketball just from like picking it up or starting it off? Oh, um, I don't know. I would, I would honestly say, I would say it's pretty even. Um, I mean, because even as a kid, I felt like I was really athletic. I mean, I played all sports. I played football, basketball, baseball, soccer, um, did uh, swimming, uh, ran track. And so I felt like I was, I was really athletic as a kid. And so basketball was something I really liked because it's a lot of up and down, up and down. And uh, I was really good at that. But I also felt like I was good at piano. So I don't know, I'll say it's about the same. <laughs> On that note, 
if you weren't a professional basketball player and you weren't a professional pianist, what sport do you think you could have gone pro in since you were such an athlete from such a young age? Oh, um, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. You know, I would say football, but my mom wouldn't let me do that too, too much longer than like past ninth, ninth, 10th grade. After she saw the concussion video, you know, she, she got really, the concussion movie, she got really scared. So yeah. I would say probably baseball. I really liked baseball as a, as a, um, as a kid and I played T-ball and stuff like that. So maybe that, maybe I'll say baseball. What position did you play in baseball? I think I was, uh, I was outfield. So okay. uh, catch the long balls, you know, chase them down, things like that. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Shane from section 374. What's something you experienced in the NBA that you did not expect? I feel like I've, I got a, I mean, I feel like I got a lot of really good advice going into to, um, my NBA experience and um, I feel like I was, I've been pretty prepared for anything. I think what I didn't expect was just how, um, just how like welcoming and like supportive this group of guys are. Um, Cause I heard, as I said before, I heard that, um, that the NBA is more about business and no one really cares about each other as much, but I mean, on this team, I mean, it's been really fun and everyone's really looking out for each other. So I think that that's probably something I didn't expect, but I was definitely pleasantly surprised. Okay. So I'll ask a follow-up to that. Did you expect like the NBA COVID protocols to be what they are and having to navigate that process along with navigating your first year in the NBA? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty crazy. I, I guess that's something also I didn't, I didn't really expect to be that strict, um, testing like a lot, you know, um, just wearing masks all the time, not being able to go out. I mean, it's, it's, it's weird, but I mean, you have to do it if you want to want to be able to play. So. Yeah. Coaches just talked about not only like the, the physical gruelingness of this season, but also like the, the mental aspect of it and all these things that you're having to do on top of basketball. Have you felt that a little bit and how have you dealt with that? You know, I wouldn't say I felt it as much yet. I mean, I think we're still in the early stages of the season. But um, I don't know. I think that just talking with family, um, staying positive and looking at the, the good things about my situations, I think that's what I'll do if, I, if that ever comes or that ever happens to me. So, yeah. Basketball runs in your family, yeah? Yeah. Who else plays? Um, my sister, my, both my sisters. Um, I have a one, one sister that's a junior in high school and another sister that's an a, a eighth grader. Um, and they both play basketball. My, my older sister, who's in, uh, who's a junior high school, she's a uh, number seven or eight in her class. And she has, she has offers from everywhere. Um, so yeah, she's, she's even better than me than I, when I was that age. So she's, she's definitely a problem and a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> a lot of pickup <laughs> games growing up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I, I know you're from Minnesota. Maybe season ticket members might not know. You guys, Zeke played in the same conference as me in Minnesota. We went to basically rival high schools. So I've told him a million times, I won't hold it against him. But did you play pickup games in the brutal Minnesota winters in the same way that I did? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think like the pickup games in the winters, they suck because sometimes, you know, you'll come to the gym and it's freezing and, you know, the, the heat hasn't been turned on or whatever and you're just you're wearing your sweatshirt your your pants just trying to warm up just get loose I mean those those are miserable even driving to drive to the gym and like when it's like zero degrees out though that's that's just the worst <laughs> I mean I'm talking did you get shots up outside in the winter time ever oh oh yeah in the driveway oh okay. yeah Good. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, did you have family pickup games when it's like starting to snow a little bit? Because you're not a true Minnesotan unless you've done that. You're not oh, a yeah, true for Minnesota sure. Hooper. For sure. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay. Our final question from season ticket members is from Adam and he's usually in section 130. Who is the greatest influence in your life? And what is your favorite part about being in the Denver community so far? So a two-parter. We'll start with who is the greatest influence in your life? Um, the greatest influence in my life has probably been my grandma, um, you know, I think that she's, she's super important to me. You know, she's always giving me advice on life. I mean, she doesn't really know as much about, about basketball, but more life advice and, you know, how to be a good person and things like that. And um, I'm super, super grateful for, 
for all the advice she's given me and just that she's a part of my life. And yeah, I mean, she's definitely been the biggest influence on me and, and who I am as a person. Um, to answer the, the second part, um, you know, I feel like I haven't experienced the Denver community a whole lot just because I've been stuck at home every day. Um, the only time I really ever go anywhere is maybe when I go to the grocery store. But other than that, you know, I haven't, I haven't been out and about, so I can't, because I can't really speak on that as much. <laughs> what about on social media? Have you had some love from Nuggets fans there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Super supportive. Um, I mean, I don't know. I think it's, it's great, you know, to have, have a supportive fan base. I haven't really seen anything negative about me. So that's always, that's always a plus. <laughs> that's always a win. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the best piece of advice your grandma has given you? I'm curious. Um, I think the, the biggest, like most important piece of advice she's given me is um, just to, to treat people how you would want to be treated. I mean, I know a lot of people have heard that before, but I mean, I really think about that a lot. And, you know, I, I really try to, to do that and, um, and everything that I do, treat people with respect because that's how I would want to be treated. And I feel like if you treat people with respect, you know, they'll, they'll give the respect back. So, yeah. I have a, a couple more just that I think Nuggets fans would want to hear from you about. And I do want to talk about um, your heritage a little bit too in Nigeria and that being so important to you because on draft night, obviously that was part of the statement that you made when you were drafted by the Nuggets. With the 22nd pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Denver Nuggets select Zeke Naji from the University of Arizona. Yeah, my, my Igbo heritage... Um, is super important to me. I mean, growing up, I mean, that was always big. We always eat a lot of Igbo, Igbo food, um, like Nigerian food. Um, uh, what's it called? My, my, my probably, my favorite, my go-to favorite meal is a uh, fufu and a goosey soup. Um, that's, that's good. It's like what pounded yam. It's pounded yam. So you have, you have yam and you pound it, you grind it into a powder, put some water in it, and then it get, turns into this like almost... Um, potato-like texture, but it's a little thicker than potatoes. And you pick you pick up like a, a little clump in your hand and you roll it into the ball. Um, and then you have this like soup with like different like vegetables, um, um, different uh, like nuts, um, meat, things like that. And you can put like all different things in it. And then you take the, the ball that you have in your hand and you scoop it and you put it on top and you eat it like that. And it's, it's so good and it's so, it's so wow. good. Um, so can you make it? Do you make it yourself? Uh, no, I probably, I probably couldn't make it. I can make the, the, the fufu is easy, but the, the goosey soup, that's, that's a little harder to, to make. So my, my, either my dad or my grandma will make that uh, for me. But uh, yeah, I think even, even growing up, you know, we had this thing in Minnesota called Ebo Fest. It's like once a year, um, every August, you know, a lot of the, the Evo community gathers together um, in this in different like one location de depends on where it is that year. But um, you know, we gather together and just you know celebrate our culture and our and our heritage, and that's that's always a fun a fun day. I love that. Okay, my final question for you: What are you most looking forward to when you think about the season and what remains in terms of your growth and then being a part of this Nuggets team? Yeah, um, you know, I think. Right now, I'm just looking forward to continuing to get better every day. I think that's the biggest thing because I want to be able to, to help contribute to this to this team um, by, by being able to play. I know that I'm just I'm just being patient. You know, my I feel like my time is going to come, and uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to be working hard and preparing for that. So when it does come, you know, I can I can definitely help the team out a lot. So I think that that's what I'm that's what I'm most looking forward to. What do you think the the limit is for this team? Is there a ceiling? Is that what's the goal? Yeah, I think that when we're when we're locked in and we play um, all the entire game, you know, really hard, really well. Um, I think that we can we can really beat anyone, you know, when we're locked in defensively and we're and things are clicking and firing offensively. Yeah, I feel like we're we're the team to beat. So yeah. Awesome, Zeke. Thank you so much for the time. I know the season ticket members appreciate it and. I, I don't feel guilty speaking for them when I say they are hoping with all their might they get to see you in person <laughs> real soon and at Ball Arena and cheering loud and proud as Nuggets Nation always does. So thank you for taking the time to let them get to know you. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much.